Chapter 38, Introduction to Level 2. In the second level of Black Root Science, I intend to show people two things, how to get in touch with the higher self and how to remember. Getting in touch with the higher self is not at all difficult. What is difficult is remembering the experience. The higher self talks to us all the time, whenever there is a need for it. It's quite a simple thing for him slash her to do, but here's the problem. Almost always when our first self communicates with us, we instinctively and automatically turn our consciousness inward. We put ourselves into a dreamy type of consciousness, and the reason we do that is because we have a deep ingrained fear of God. All of us do. We got this fear in many different ways, starting right from childhood. As young children, we naturally do not have this fear. Believe it or not, but all children are born completely fearless. All our fears come from the outside. We are taught by the older generations to be fearful, as they too were taught. The fear of God is the worst of all. In the West, it comes about primarily from religion. Many in the Christian influence world know the saying, no one can see the face of God and live. That's the greatest and most ingenious lie the devil ever came up with. The fact of the matter is that as children, we see the face of God whenever we want. He slash she comes to us in many faces according to what we are comfortable with. As we grow older and are taught to fear God, we suppress the memories of these visitations. We really believe that if we see God's face, we'll shrivel and die. So we bury the memories of any past and future visitations deep in our psyche. But now listen, whenever God visits us again in whatever form, we are as peaceful and happy as can be. So we don't intend or even consider cutting off communication. It's unthinkable, which leads to this dilemma. We are afraid of God, yet we love him slash her so much that we would never give up being in his slash her presence. So how do we solve the dilemma? Simple, the mind is very inventive. What we do is we alter the state of our consciousness whenever we are in God's company and turn it into a dreamy type of consciousness. Our dream consciousness has two states, one that is fearful and one that is fearless. The fearful one everybody is familiar with. That's the one that sometimes leads to nightmares. But we also have this other dream state that is fearless. Most people can remember having fearless dreams where you're not phased, scared, or surprised by anything. In one of these dreams, you may see a rope turn into a live snake or a car take off and fly. None of these sights surprise you at all. You think it's something that happens all the time to see a cat talking or see yourself fly. That's what I mean by our fearless dream state. We have an instinctive automatic power to bring on this state even when we're awake. That's exactly what we do when God appears to us or communicates with us in whatever way he slash she pleases. We become totally fearless at that instant so that we can enter into the experience with the utmost peace of mind. But the price we pay for suppressing our consciousness into this state is that we suppress the memories of the event as well. While we are in communication with the God in us, we are wide awake, aware, and at peace. It's like when we dream, we are totally awake then in the dream, but what happens as soon as we exit the dream? Almost all the memories fade. We are left with nothing more than a good feeling that it was a beautiful dream, but can hardly remember the details. This loss of memory is the price we pay for being in our natural state of fearlessness because our conscious minds have been taught that if we don't fear God and if we look God in the face, we will die or other lives set to that effect depending on the religion or cultural upbringing. God talks to us whenever he slash she pleases. It doesn't matter much to God that we don't remember afterwards. He slash she knows that we'll remember sooner or later and time doesn't matter that much to him slash her. But of course, it would be so much better if we could remember. In the second level of Black Root Science, I have simple ways by which people can permanently improve their memories. The improvement of memory is vital for the ultimate goal, which is to hear the inner self. As I said, we do hear, we just don't remember. So it will primarily be a memory training exercise. It's simple, but not easy. By that, I mean the actual mechanics of memory improvement are quite simple, but one must be committed and not give up. How long it takes depends on each person. At the same time, I'll show people how to reverse or rather rewrote 
their circuits in our brains that have been programmed into believing lies during many years of brainwashing, especially in school.